Hi, today I will tell you about a car that is basically American but has a lot of European elements. What is it all about? Watch to the end. Cadillac is one of the symbols of American motorization and SUV Escalade, especially black, is probably the favorite model of rappers and gangsters in the United States. In Poland, however, it is an exotic view and the future of this model as a sales hit is rather questionable, but maybe a smaller SUV called XT6 has a chance to take over our market. It's not as ostentatious as Escalade, but it has the right proportions that may be to your liking. The car will certainly stand out on the street, and although it debuted in 2019, it hasn't aged visually yet. It is slightly over 5 meters long and 1.96 meters wide, which should not scare anyone in the context of looking for parking spaces in the city. When we look under the hood, we will find the first European element, but don't worry, you can relax. There is no three-cylinder unit here, and there is no electrification that is so necessary for us. However, the question arises, does a 2-liter engine fit this car visually, not necessarily, but we have a turbocharger here, 237 horsepower and 350 newton meters of maximum torque, which emphasizes the emblem on the tailgate. We should accelerate to 100 kilometers per hour in less than 8 seconds. The car weighs a little over 2 tons, and in the European market, there will be only 4-wheel drive variants. This engine handles this car well, but when we want to use it with full power, it won't be a pleasant experience for the ears, especially when compared to the American motorization, where you can find the V-Luster units. This engine is more of a recipe for a lower fuel consumption than a way to save fuel while driving. I have to say that this engine does not burn much, but it is an adequate consumption for the power and dimensions of this car. I have the impression that this unit is designed for the car, not for some values in the catalogs that are supposed to calm those who impose some restrictions on modern motorization. The car can go from 12 to 13 liters per 100 kilometers. A quiet ride on the road without exceeding 90 kilometers per hour will allow you to go down to 8 liters. However, on expressways, the engine will need about 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Another European feature is the steering, because we don't have a stereotypical American way of steering the car. This is not a pontoon, this is not a boat, the car doesn't lean in the corners. We don't feel any delays between the steering wheel and the movement of the wheels and the body. There is no adaptive suspension here, and regardless of the driving mode, it has the same characteristics. It was a short two-day meeting with this car. But I noticed a few flaws. It is not a perfect car. First of all, the safety systems. The system that warns us of a collision with a car in front of us, or in front of pedestrians who may be in front of our mask. These systems are a bit sensitive. Warnings appear very often, even when there is no danger. I also consider this to be a European element, because the pedestrian detection system is already adapted to our current regulations. The next thing is the gearbox. We have a 9-speed automatic here. When we use the automatic mode, everything works smoothly and quickly. When we turn on the manual mode and we will want to change gears with the paddles, we can be unpleasantly surprised because the gear changes sometimes come with a slight delay. I don't know what it depends on. Sometimes it is a delay, sometimes it is not, but sometimes it appears. So if we care about a fast gearbox, let's use the automatic mode. Now I will show you the interior. It is a bit American, a bit European. Here you can see the buttons which you could find in Opel, but with a sudden acceleration we can be sure that it will fall out of here. There are two cup holders here, we can also put it in and then it looks better. In front of the passenger a large pocket, nicely finished, no noise should be heard here. And a similar pocket on the passenger's side. The armrest is not too soft, the foam is about 3-4 millimeters thick. Under the armrest there is a deep pocket, here is a shelf that we can remove. As you can see there are two USB ports, USB-C and USB of the older type. We can lead the cable here, here is a hole, so it can go out here and if we hold the phone in this place it can charge without any problem. However, there is also a shelf here for wireless charging of the phone. As for the quality of the finish, I think there is nothing to complain about. In the past, it would not be very satisfactory for European standards in some premium brands. I think it's a good level. Everything is solid, nothing is cracking, maybe it's not the best touch, because we have plastic here, which looks like carbon. The same with the seats, it's a solid leather seat. It's real leather, and when you get in the car, you can smell it. It's not some eco serrat it's real leather. If you like this kind of material, you can choose it. Everything is well fitted. Maybe I would have some reservations about the interior finishing. I like the fact that you can hear some vibrations while driving and on a stop.
I like the presence of physical buttons and knobs. The menu that is on the central screen can be operated touch sensitive as well as using this knob. It's cool. Similarly, multimedia can be operated from this level. We can also operate here. We also control the air conditioning partially with physical buttons. These are a little more touchy, but we can also control everything from the level of this screen. It's cool. These are solutions that will definitely appeal to people who are not entirely convinced of what is currently fashionable. It is not a big car, but we have on board a few gadgets that make life easier. Cameras that create a 360 degree image. We can turn on each of them when we want to get closer to the curb, for example. Here we are talking about side cameras. We can also do something like this when we get to the trailer. There is even a special symbol here. There are a lot of options that make parking easier. I think that even an inexperienced person can handle steering. The menu is simple and clear. The dials are analog and there is a display. There are many options. You can use the night vision at night. Basic information about driving, range, consumption, pressure. So let's go to the back. What catches your eye is the angle of opening the door. They open very wide, so it's convenient to take a seat here. Or, for example, we'll fasten the seat because we have two ISOFIX mounts here. As you can see, the back seat has an adjustable angle of the back rest. We can also move it forward or backward. You see, that's the difference. The back seat, like the front seats, is a very comfortable seat and a very comfortable backrest. The armrest, unfortunately, is not so soft, but we have two cup holders. Even when I'm fully moved forward, I have a lot of space when I sit behind myself. When I move away, there is a lot of space. As you can see, we have two pockets behind one and the other seat. The second and third row of seats have their own air conditioning. There are also two USB ports and a very practical pocket for small things. The pockets in the doors are not too big, but paradoxically, a 1.5 liter bottle will fit here faster than in the pocket next to the driver or passenger. The third row seats can be easily unfolded from this position or from the trunk. There are similar buttons there. When we want to take a seat in the back, Back, just pull the seat back, move the seat, and unfortunately there is not much space to move. I should fit in here, but if someone has problems with a cramped car, it will definitely be difficult for him here. I use two light sources available at the back, but that doesn't mean you'll see better. I hope, however, that you will notice that this place is sufficient. You can travel here, let's say, for 100-200 kilometers, and it shouldn't be bad for us. The back of the seat is pushed back to the maximum. If the passenger gives up a little space for himself in front of his feet, it will be more comfortable. There is a place for a cup holder on both sides, just like USB-C ports. There are no older classic ports on the back. The air vents are above the head, just like in the second row. There is no armrest, but the seats are comfortable. Maybe they are not full size, but they are not the kind of comfortable seats you can find in the last row. When we transport passengers in the third row, they will suffer on the cargo space. We have a solid floor here, but we won't transport too much. The recipe for this is getting rid of the passengers and folding the seats. Then there is much more space. When we want to transport even more, we can fold the second row of supports in a very easy way. However, when we want to put them back, we have to move forward, because it only works in one direction. The AEC company, which will be responsible for the import of these cars, ensures that the cars will be fully guaranteed for two years with a mileage limit of 200,000 kilometers. It is possible that in a short time there will also be variants with the 3.6 V6 engine with over 300 horsepower. The 2 liter version is priced at just over 380,000 Zalodi. The car also comes in a 5 and 6 seater variant. In this second case, in the middle row of seats, there are captain's seats. This car has something that people who are rebellious about the digitization of motorization will appreciate. Here you can still feel its classic charm, without large screens and touch buttons. I like it. Let me know in the comments what you think about this car, and I thank you for watching this video and see you in the next ones. Thank <laughs> you.